Hey, Swain. Hey, Swain. It's me, Swain. Are, I'm back. Hi. Yeah. Is your is your internet okay? We kind of lost you there last week. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was Would only say- down for two hours, and those two hours were during the interview. Ah, oh, man. I'm sorry. That no, that really sucks. I know, like, you are the Gambit guy, and I know you were really looking forward to that. So, yeah, I mean, we can't reschedule or anything, but oh, that, well, that I mean, sucks. I, I did call them right after to have my own little interview. You, wait, what? I'm, so, wait, I'm sorry, you called them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, called up Deej and said, patch me through to Lars and Robbie, and uh, I want to do, like, a really quick podcast thing. They patch you. Did they like? Did did DJ hit the pound button and then dial Lars no, and then DJ the has one of those like again? switchboards that you see in old movies where he's like he plugs into the, the things. Huh. Yeah. So. Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, like we could just play. It. Huh. So we have the we have, we have it. you. It's edited. What Andrew did Andrew, it. Go ahead and play the interview. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, fellas. I just wanted to grab you both for a quick chat uh, since I missed the main interview. You know, it kind of sucked. Gib, it's my favorite game mode, so. Thank you for having us. Hey, I'm so busy. Well, I won't keep you very long. Just one important question. I've I've always wanted to know, who was Gambit created for? I think uh, Luke Smith described it really well uh, when he said, like, Gambit is kind of for Swain. That's quite the statement that I'm glad is finally in the open. After my convo with him at the summit, I was just waiting for this kind of just creep out into light of day. You know he doesn't say a lot, but it's good to hear him finally say it. Is this what you told the audience in the early part of the show, Lars? What I said is not even real. Is it because I'm handsome and super funny and really good at destiny? You guys flatter me so much. Now get back to work and make more Swain-focused game modes, please. Thank you for having us. Yeah, we are always happy to talk about Swain. surprised at how (laughs) me focused it was yeah i i i feel like in just a couple minutes you were able to get a lot of information out of them that we didn't get in like the hour if i had been there plus we talked to them it would have been a whole different interview we probably Uh, got way more people hating us on reddit we yeah we are a joke birds we are 187 episodes and we couldn't even come close to that See, I refuse to believe that. I think we're we're just normal, and Swain has some type of weird power <laughs> over Lars and Robbie. Mm-hmm. Could be that. Um, Could be that. Yeah. Well, uh, it's Swain, I, I gotta say, <laughs> I was not a believer, but I'm I'm impressed, and I'm a little bit intimidated. Yeah. Next week, I, I you know I might do an interview with you. But you can't oh, just <laughs> will spin I, will it I around and interview us. How does that work? You can- yeah, you'll see how it works. Welcome to Crucible Radio, your show for all things Destiny 2 PvP. Ah, oh, he's a natural. Got it. <laughs> he got it. He I, 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 would, I feel like I heard you type it out very quickly <laughs> to then I typed to it then in read my head. it, but okay. <laughs> the old brain typing technique. Yeah. Long time listeners of the so. show will know that. Uh, well, they won't know this, but uh, we actually re record that bit over and over and over and over and over again. It's really hard to say. Welcome to Desk. See, I already messed it up. Like, so we, it takes us usually <laughs> 10 to 11 Crucible takes. Radio. I wanted to say Crucible Radio 2. <laughs> your source for all things Destiny. We, we were doing that. That was for the a name minute. of the show for a long time, actually. I think it was like 50 episodes worth. I can't remember. Hmm. Well, here we are. I, I, what do you guys think about this? I was thinking, mm-hmm. let's rebrand. Uh, let's do our, uh, I was looking through the, the destiny art book and they have all this, like, you know, all like the Cosmodrome. I know it's not pronounced like this. I, I learned 20 episodes ago, 50 episodes, how to pronounce it. And I forgot. Um, but it's like the Cyrillic letters that look like they say like Poba and it's all just like, kind of like 
80s Soviet style art. Like what if we had like that kind of vibe and then it was just CR. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just like two big letters, like get, like ditch the shield, ditch like the whole coat of arms thing and just like CR and it's like white and like off brown and like maybe like washed out. <sighs> I was fine with it until your color palette, but look, we don't have to decide those things now. Oh, well, no. Okay. No. Okay. Alternate, alternate presentation. I was driving on the freeway the other day and I saw (laughs) uh, the semi truck with the logo and I had to take a picture and send it to Dan right away. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'll post it in the chat. Would you get a look at that truck? Come on. That's you saw a steel that's some typography truck. right there. Yeah, come on, it's all blue, but then they've got like that smooth Roy G. Biv gradient. Yeah, dope truck. I guess that's pretty good. Better than most trucks. I don't know how we're gonna get the whole gradient <laughs> on just two letters. Visual yeah. bits on a podcast. Well, welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, we are recording this on Thursday night because that's what we usually do and because it's the only uh, time we could. That's how scheduling works out, which means we don't really know what is in the TWAB this week, but we suspect it's something. They threw us a curveball and said, hey, it's going to be on Friday morning. What the hell? <sighs> you know what, guys? I am, I've had enough of this. I propose a new solution. I'm going to go buy twab.com. Okay. And I'm going to post the twab on the Wednesday before instead of the Friday after because I think it's just come your prediction of And it'll be our twab, right? Like it's, I'll find some way to get it. Okay. I'll like, I'll oh, just take right. my best guess. And then when it comes out, I'll update mine just to like get it like exactly matching. Hmm, okay. Even though we know that Dylan or Cosmo does write it on Thursday, the day it's posted, you will find a way to get what they are going to write. And look, post it on look, Wednesday. that is something for the engineers to figure out. I'm more of an idea guy <laughs> and I'm looking for an investor. So uh, please you, send me a, send me, a, <laughs> I bought the domain name. So send me an email. You idea guys are the worst. At <laughs> <laughs> they say we're a dime a dozen, uh, but I don't see any other dimes around here. Uh-huh. Uh, we did get some hints last week that we didn't really talk about because we were interviewing Bungie employees <laughs> about a little game mode called Gambit. Uh, and if you didn't hear it, you should go check it out. I thought that was a pretty good talk. It was a good conversation. Yeah, yeah. They I, really got their uh, their audio recording set up figured out over there. And also they didn't have Noosk in the room just eating fucking chips in the middle of an interview, which also <laughs> yeah, they're not great for audio quality. At no point in the interview was there just like a sound for some reason in the background. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, ceremonial transition into the <laughs> second hour of a new skin interview. Um, but we did get some details in the TWAB last week that uh, I think are interesting. A bunch of stuff that people aren't really using that much is getting better. Auto rifles, scout rifles, sniper rifles. <laughs> um, they, Snipers. <laughs> sniper rifles. Um, they got Acreus getting bumped up. And who was, God, who who's pointed that out in chat the other day? Where, or maybe it was in an interview. I don't know. All destiny related things are blurred to me these days. But like when Acreus came out, that was like, oh my God, that's the max range. Nothing else hits that hard. And it was like eight meters. And now that's like a bad roll on a shotgun <laughs> yeah. if you can only hit eight meters. It's an instant dismantle. So they're bumping it up. Uh, Telesto, they're changing the uh, charge time, get it lined up. Um, yeah, I, don't know. I, uh, I was that guy this week as I jumped back in and, uh, <laughs> I was like, why not use Telesto? It is. It's a silly gun. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's, there's two gameplay styles you can use with it. There is the hilarious one where you spray your teammates with it and then send them into danger to see what happens. <laughs> and then there's like the boring one where you peek and leave a bunch of stuff on the ground and then just like hide until it kills someone. I'm sure there's a third play style where it's just like you're really good with it and it does stuff. <laughs> but like I don't do any of those except for the bad one and I get bored and I use a different gun. I don't know. Doing some stuff with trace rifles. I guess wave splitters coming down. I got to wave use splitter. a wave splitter on PS4, and it should. Okay, good to know. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, you know what I'll tell you is fun um, is uh, Yotun. Yotun. And when I say fun, I mean getting killed with it is uh, <laughs> fun because I don't have we one. We can't say that anyone here has one yet. 
Um, although I did get a lemon arch. Lemon arch. Yeah, you said that earlier today too, and I almost Googled before. It's like, no, no, they put me through this last time. <laughs> it is not lemon arch. You don't need to Google. <laughs> what kind of what kind of search results did you get when you searched lemon arch? Oh, they were t- they were dreadful. <laughs> um now what uh what uh what what do you think? Are you like are you into the that 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 dot lifestyle? Um, I mean bows are their own thing that I'm not they are. too keen on at the moment. So uh there'll be a time when I go through my bow phase. It's like right after the goth phase. <laughs> <laughs> um formative time in any young man's life. Yeah, yeah. No, um I'm hoping I'm hoping I go through that. So I have. It's I, there. I want the Yotun, obviously. Yeah, you got it with the Yotun. You just gotta let him burn that ammo. It's like it's like when when somebody like gets rockets and just like, all right, I, I gotta bait out the rockets first. If you don't bait them out, you can get shot with them, and they get two. Yeah, <laughs> coming. That's my advice there. I went through a bit of a bow phase recently, uh, with uh, the old uh, dust rock blues and uh, arsenic bite. I figured. Mm. Uh, let me give this arsenic bite a shot. And you know what? Let me tell you. For PvE, I love that arsenic bite. I love it. I like uh, like how it shoots good, good and fast. And it's got the little timer on it that tells you when uh, it starts to turn red if you if you wait too long. In PvP, not a lot of luck. <laughs> don't, don't, don't know if I actually killed that many people with, with a bow shot. <laughs> and then like Keen was talking about like, oh, I'm all bow. I'm grinding up to legend with a bow. And I'm like, oh, it must be possible then. But uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not doing it right. Yeah, I, yeah like I, I can't hit peak the... And pace and peak. I can't do well with that archetype, even though I like it better, like just the way it feels, where it looks. But I, I have better luck with the Subtle Calamity. I got one with Quick Draw and Archer's Tempo. And yes, I said a comment about how bows aren't competitive. And Keen said, watch me. And he got to mountaintop with a bow. And I was like, fine, I'll give them a shot. Uh, so... Blame him, but uh, yeah, it feels good. Archer, Archer's tempo is just the must have perk. Uh, I also just like that because I'm not just running with like a kill clip gun, uh, which is just like on everything these days. Uh, but it, it's very, very solid. There's something about that archetype that just I don't know, I seem to have more success with. But Arsenic Bite, I mean, objectively, it's got Archer's tempo, which I just mentioned, and it has Rampage, which is great on everything else. Mm-hmm. There, I've seen, I've seen clips on Twitter of three stacking with rampage rampage and just getting straight up headshot kills going absolutely berserk with this gun. So I know it's there. I know the skill ceiling is there, but for some reason um, it's not, it's not fitting right. But I, I look forward to whenever this uh, lemon arch drops for me because a uh, void bow in the energy slot is already one of my go-tos right now. Go to yo tune. Go to yo tune. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I like it in PVE. I liked using it uh, to clear ads, but you, it's a good place to get that, like, because you got to get the perfect draw down. Mm-hmm. So, like, to kind of get used to when you snap it, uh, it's a good, it's yeah, a good way of doing it. Keen's big recommendation with Archer's Tempo, uh, of course, the perk is that when you hit a precision shot, you'll be able to draw and fire the next one much faster. So that's ultimately the best way uh, to to get a fast kill in the crucible, it literally ups the the kill time. Um, but bows are very accurate when firing from the hip. So Keen was saying, like, just hit, like you, you know, do your lineup, your shot, peek a little bit, hold it down, get your head shot, and then when you can draw that second one quickly, just hip fire because yeah. it's still very accurate, and you're gonna get uh, enough to get a kill. And it's it's a really well, great little combo, and you get into a nice rhythm. I saw a great video by Cami this week. And he kind of went into uh, things to pair the last word with because the last word's coming oh, yeah. next week. Um, and he kind of just went over the energy slot as a whole and just like, here's all the things you can put here that I think go really well with it. He covered snipers, he covered shotguns, he covered uh, bows as well. Um, but he did a great like demonstration of the difference between like uh, steady rounds on a sniper and uh no steady rounds Hmm. like when you're blinting so like you're swapping from like you get a body shot with a like a quick sniper and you switch to your uh, last word like what's your best option and the difference was like 
if you look at like a doorway in Destiny and say like your sniper hit their feet in the doorway without steady rounds, when you go to switch to your like hand cannon, it would shoot like the top of the doorway. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> like if you just immediately switch and shoot, like the kick from the sniper rifle pushes your reticle so far up, but steady rounds was like, only a third of the way up the doorway, essentially. So, like, it's a massive difference, like, when it comes to, like, that quick quick swap. And it was, like, the same with a lot of other things, too. Like, quick swap. Trying to get the really quick shot with your bow and then switching to last word, like, very fast. Because you- Okay, my, uh, my PvP Tatara Gaze has kill clip, rapid hit, and steady rounds. Ooh. Tasty. Good to know. That's a tasty roll. Um, but yeah, that was like, hit, go check out his video. It's amazing uh, when it comes to like preparing yourself for this thing. It's also good for if you're trying to figure out uh, your energy slot in general. Yeah, I mean, I, we were, I was just talking with Moon about how I can't get these forge weapons to drop, but who cares because I'll just be using the last word. <laughs> Uh, Im- immediately when I get that. So, uh, yeah, this is going to fit into my, uh, my loadout quite nicely. Also, I look, I love, I love not forgotten boys. It's a great weapon, but I get a little bored Boy. of how often I use it. So I'd love to oh, switch it's it too up. Easy. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love a kinetic 180 instead of constantly using this energy weapon. I just can't wait for the return of your last word related catchphrase blip. Blip, 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 <laughs> blip, blip, drop it. <laughs> last word on my hip, like, because I have last word on my hip, blip, 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 drop, blip, blip, blip. My name's Rapping Bones, and I rap and I rip. I got the last word, and it's blip, blip, blip. <laughs> I'm dropping <laughs> next Monday. <Wow. laughs> oh, the shit. next rap. Live on Crucible Radio. Yeah, I just go silent for years, drop the next Crucible rap, and it's just this weird, like, a one and a two, and how do you do? (laughs) (laughs) Folks, uh, that's the thing, is that there are people listening to us talk right now. Never gets old. Uh, But you're thinking to yourself, this is good, but who am I? Could I be like Brent, perhaps? Brent, who through the power of supporting Crucible Radio on Patreon, (laughs) has developed a number of unique abilities. Brent has perfect night vision. From listening to our bonus pod, yeah. Brent's, uh, his hair and his beard are so thick, it's like fur. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Did you know that because he listens to Real World Crucible Radio on patreon.com slash crucible radio. Okay. He can now jump from the floor to the top of the refrigerator. Like onto no it? No problem. Yeah, yeah, one jump. Hmm. It's clean. Much like clean. a uh, small household animal. Hmm. No, this is Brent's power. Okay. It's his thing. Hmm. And he is made strong because uh, he listens to the most pot. Hey, you know what? Does Brent like dry food or wet food? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I... I'm going to say he'll eat dry food if he's hungry, but he's really holding out for but the he always I mean, leaves, Is that true He of always all of leaves us? a layer of dry food on the bottom and uh, pretends that there's no food there. No. Yeah, yeah that's poison. Everyone knows you would put poison on the bottom layer of the bowl. So, look, if, uh, if you enjoy, uh, you know, our antics and, uh, hey, you, you enjoy Engineer Andrew making this listenable uh, <laughs> and want to show Engineer Andrew some support, uh, your support on Patreon. Make it more uh, of a threat. Him. If you don't support us, the show <laughs> gets worse. We're not editing the show anymore. <laughs> the show gets it's worse. It's going to get weird. <laughs> and uh, it starts at a dollar an episode. It's a twice monthly podcast, and we have a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun. So go check it out. We should make Andrew create five minutes of unedited podcast and post it as a threat. <laughs> People listen. What's this? Oh, oh my God. Yikes. It's awful. <laughs> well, we're kind of just filling this here for the interview. Um, Destiny is in a weird place right now. Guys, are we in a, I think we're in a, we in a lull. 
We're in a lull. No. Uh, I, it can't be. What am I supposed to do? Not Last time this happened, I freaked the fuck out. Yeah, I mean, if there's one thing I know about destiny and lulls, it's that I've it's never happened before. <laughs> it's, I've never felt like this. Whatever this game comes normal. out right now is going to kill it. Yes. I'm looking yep. at you, Iron Man 3. Planet the of the Apes VR. <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> I hear Division 2 is directly a result of failing to kill Destiny the first time. It's back. <laughs> <laughs> with a vengeance. Division 2, back with a vengeance. Uh, no, I mean, like, we're, we're in a lull, obviously. Um, and we'll have some time before season of the drifter comes out so i think everyone should do what i just did in december take a little break rest that's fair that's fair rest your brain have some time to do other things come back and realize that you didn't have one of your ram properly (laughs) inserted into your motherboard yeah that's probably just a you thing swain but it could happen to other people I hope that one other person realizes this. So, <laughs> and hey, look, uh, but no, uh, if, like it was for me taking another little break. Uh, it was energizing. I've been playing Destiny all week. Uh, kind of missed all of the fun, but yeah, I'll be fine. I'm enjoying myself. There's a lot tougher competition when the the PvP community is a little bit smaller at the moment, but it makes me better, stronger, look um, faster. I've, Dollar in the jar, uh, but I, we talked about this a couple years ago now, probably about how when there is a lull, play a different game, like get yourself into a different shooter. Uh, you'll notice some different habits and you'll feel a little differently and you might pick up some other skills, which happened to me when I started playing Overwatch for the first time. Uh, so that's literally what I'm doing. And I'm still, of course, grinding out the forges and getting my PVP in when I want to because I'm back to having fun with fighting lion, but everyone will um, be back next week for last words. Yeah, exactly. And like, you'll, you'll be around and, and I've been trying to like realize, Oh, I've played other games and realize like, Ooh, my, (laughs) my accuracy shot is not good. Or my like auto rifle shot is bad. Like the prolonged uh, tracking with a mouse and stuff like that. So just noticing those skills are more prominent in other games can be helpful in my destiny game. Yeah. I'm probably going to hold off going for not forgotten. (laughs) This is, (laughs) I'll just leave it there. But uh, it has It's so been, overplayed. I mean, <laughs> everyone's got one, and we're basically leaving them in our vaults. Now. <laughs> uh, I want it. I, I will get it at some point. It's maybe just not. Maybe if everybody shows up at the end. I don't know. We'll see. Um, the new changes to the comp playlist. Have any of you guys uh, jumped in and done it? No, I, I've been taking a break as well. I, I got to up about to about 3,000 and then uh, focused more on the PVE side of the things. But yeah, I mean, I'm seeing mixed results. It's fine. It's going to be different. Uh, but, you know, Swain, to your point, I people do definitely return because I've been playing heavily in the end of the season the last two times. And uh, the playlist does fill up because people are like, oh, got to hit that. Uh, pinnacle weapon and stuff like that. All so. the procrastinators show up to finish everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of them. But that's fair because you don't have to do everything the first week a game is out. <laughs> and, uh, Wait, you mean I didn't have to play 30, uh, 40 games of Gambit in one day? Swain, actually, no, because I got breakneck like a week and a half ago and it was the same gun. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me that. I feel like we will have so much more to talk about next week when it comes to the last word and patch notes and how everything feels Mm -hmm. as we get into it new and we probably will i'd i'll 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 have a hot take on anthem probably tesla's the new stuff comes out tomorrow right vip demo whatever yeah yeah that's happening give it a shot iron man 3 the game i hear it deletes destiny from your hard drive when you install (laughs) it i'm never coming back And don't let your friends tell you that a, P- a PVE only game is going to kill this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we got, a, we got a, a bright future ahead of us. But, you know, speaking of what else to do in the Destiny world, our guest this week is the perfect person to talk about that. Because she's super connected with the rest of it. And there's much more than, you know, like our narrow little corner of this community. Yeah. Her catchphrase is Destiny 
for the rest of it. <laughs> Is it? I, I assume so. That sounds like something my girlfriend says to make fun of me or something like that. <laughs> destiny, yeah. destiny like, for okay. the rest of me. She's like, she, no, that's what she says. She says, destiny, how about time for the rest of me because I'm not watching TV with her or something like that. Ah. Clever. Yeah, she's, no, she's funny. And she likes going to sleep when she's tired. <laughs> yes. No, staying up late, sleeping time. Doesn't have my issue. Well, let's get, let's get on to uh, our interview with the lovely Moonvald. Uh, but first, there's this part. If you've been here, you know what's <laughs> about to happen. Um, <clears throat> blip. Blip. Blip, 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 blip. Oh, by the way, uh, no actual Crucible rap coming anytime soon, but I did put out a montage. It's called Riot, made by the amazing Green and Gold, a.k.a. Greeny, my boy, the only person allowed to touch my Destiny clips. And it's a banger if I do say so myself. So go check it out on our YouTube channel. All right, musical break. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, listeners. We are joined today by the super lovely, the super talented, Moonvald. Hey. Welcome. Hello, Moon. Hello. Hey, Moon. Thanks for coming on the show. I heard that Moon can jump from the floor all the way up on top of the refrigerator. Have you seen me? I don't think that's true. <laughs> I, I, I think it, it happened it, at Guardian College. All the more amazing. <laughs> I <laughs> felt like jumping on top of the refrigerator a couple times. Don't get me wrong, but... Yeah. Oh, welcome to the show, Moon. Uh, this is this has been a long time coming, um, and y- you know it's interesting, right? Like I, you know, we've been we've been friends for some time mm-hmm. now, um, but you know, you haven't been on Crucible Radio yet, and I think we've not interacted much in that way because we're very PvP focused, um, and you you kind of focus on all the stuff that uh, Destiny has to offer. Apparently, more than just PvP. Yeah. Who knew? Weird. Imagine that. <laughs> Weird. I tell you, from the floor all the way up on top of the refrigerator. I don't know if you want it up there. Um, so I guess uh, let's let's get started at the beginning. I mean, how did you get involved in this 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 crazy mixed up world we call destiny? And what was tell us, yeah? Tell us your story. Oh man, you want me to start right at the beginning, huh? Well, we got plenty of time. So. Oh wow. <laughs> well, you know We can make this episode as long as we want. Andrew just has to true. edit it no matter what. <laughs> yep. I am so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 5 hours, he just deals with it. Yeah, no. So Destiny 1 was my first ever console FPS experience. Um I'd never really been interested in that sort of genre of game before because, you know, you got your kind of generic sort of cookie cutter military situation. Uh-huh. That just never really Dude's a camo. Yeah, you know. <laughs> M4. You know. M4 with a different scope on it. <laughs> Basically. Um and that never really appealed to me. Um but I remember very distinctly I was hanging out with a friend and he was playing D1. Um and I was like, hang on a minute what is this? This looks different. And I sat and I watched him play, just watched him play for like three or four hours. And I was amazed at the way everything looked (laughs) at the weapons, just everything. And I was like, I got to get in on that. So he showed me the ropes. He let me make an account, just, you know, used his PlayStation for months and months and months. Um, and I guess the rest is history. But I was just so enamored with the universe and the environment and the design that it was pretty irresistible to me. So, yeah. So you just took over his PlayStation? Essentially, yeah. Forever? Never, <laughs> he, yeah. he essentially walked out of the room, never came back, and now you just play Destiny all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I kind of okay. had to. <laughs> I'm curious. Do you remember like the what you actually saw? The first time you saw I Dustin? Do. Yeah. I do. He was patrolling Venus um, and he had the ram on. And I'm big into that sort of like dark, edgy, like <laughs> druidic sort of aesthetic. And I just thought it was super cool. Space edgelord. Space edgelord. Yes, definitely. Been a void walker ever since. You want to know what's wild? 
when you were telling that story and I was imagining it uh, inside my brain theater, <laughs> um, you know what was playing on the TV was uh, Patrol on Venus. Like, no joke, that cave's where you would go to, like, practice your sniping. Wild. <laughs> um, yeah. I remember the first time I ever saw Destiny. It was, I was a Christmas baby, and I'd just gotten uh, my uh, PlayStation for Christmas. I was so happy. Um, and it came with, like, one game, and you get to choose what it is, but that was the year they ddos the PlayStation Network at Christmas. <laughs> and so yeah. for, like, days, no one could play anything. Uh, and the only thing that worked on the PlayStation was the Twitch app. And so I watched people play Destiny on Twitch because it was like dead or I don't know, like some Far Cry or something. And uh, I remember seeing, uh, I was watching a stream of somebody playing Crota and they had Thorn on. And I remember having that same reaction of like, this is what Destiny mm -hmm. is? <laughs> oh, I want to get this one. Because uh, it's just like, cool, yeah, it was just like bones and like a gun that was Bones yeah, he was watching me. It was, he, he fell in love. He laid it over your shoulder. Um, Pretended to not know who we were and joined this podcast. So it was all, all a ruse. Um, Moon, what, what part of the community kind of drew you in? Because, like, obviously it was just you and your friend. Uh, but, like, what drew you even further into the community? Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of complicated. It wasn't exactly... Um, all sunshine and rainbows at first. Cause I started playing with um, some guys. I think that I found on Twitter. I don't exactly remember. They weren't exactly the nicest people, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of another story altogether. But um, I, I just wanted to play with other people at first. Right. Cause I spent about six months just doing PVE stuff, not touching the crucible, nothing. And then I decided that, you know, maybe it's time to kind of explore the multiplayer. So uh, I think I added somebody on Twitter and then it just kind of went from there and interacted with their friend group a little bit more. But then as I started following more people, I sort of noticed how like really vibrant and diverse the community is. Um, there are a ton of different kinds of guardians out there. Um, so I started interacting more with that and making friends who I kind of felt were on the same page as me. Um, and things got a little bit more productive from there, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got to find the yeah. people. It is kind of funny too. Like I remember back then it seems like crazy to do now, but the first people I started adding on PlayStation besides like people I knew from like high school and college or something like that was just like, well, I got to do vault of glass somehow. Yeah. So let's send some invites to people in the tower. And it's just like, Oh God, I like shiver oh, at no. the thought <laughs> now. Like just like I did more our fire teams and it was just like, Oh, Hey, good night for all everyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Never going to talk. Yeah, again, right? I, yeah. Cool. yeah. Like I think I got there eventually, but I think I definitely remember the first couple of times. Cause like I'd get the messages myself too. Right. Like who can help us kill Atheon? And I'm like, I don't know what that is. I'm not going to respond to these people, but uh, I very the distinctly <laughs> remember like trolling our fire teams for <laughs> not trolling the people, but like, like being a troll, troll. There, like, oh right, no. uh, for the vault of glass like uh, chest checkpoint because there'd always oh, be checkpoint. like one person like Kage checkpoint giving away that checkpoint to everyone and having like people just join in, grab the chest, and leave. Yeah, running back and forth. It was a good time. So I mean, I, th I think it, it was a circuitous route for all of us to kind of figure out where we fit in. Uh, how'd you get involved in the Crucible Radio? I I don't even know. Actually, I remember when we first mm -hmm. met. There was, yeah, there was a group chat and Moon hopped in and everyone told me in advance, like, oh yeah, Moon, she's, she's okay. She's okay. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. was like, oh, okay. I don't like any strangers or even my best friends on the internet, but <laughs> this okay. Is true. This is true. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just don't like it. Um, but then Moon hopped in and I was like, yeah, she seems fine. Um, but yeah, what, 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 what led you over to the Crucible, at Crucible Radio neck of the woods? Oh God. Um, actually Crucible Radio was the first like podcast, I guess sort of content content creation oh, <laughs> sphere that I was really interested in um, as I started kind of integrating more um, on Twitter and stuff like that. Uh, because, you know, I just, I thought y'all were 
pretty cool. I thought you mm. guys are pretty nice and interesting uh, and fun to listen to. And they're all like, whoa, over here. Um, I don't know about that. <laughs> but it's true. And yeah, I I listened for for quite a while. Um, and then, like Bones mentioned, I you know, got on the Planet Destiny podcast. I was like, what if Bones and Fallout don't like me? And what if, like, I'm super, <laughs> uh, like, <laughs> just... It, that was really strange. Um, but then I started talking to Bones more. And Birds, I think the first time we actually talked talked was after I listened to your episode with um, your whole parable of the sower thing. Oh, which yeah. I really connected with. And I kind of have a policy to where if something like really like hits me like that, I try to reach out to the person that made it, um, if, if it's appropriate, obviously, um, and say, Hey, thanks. This was really important to me. Um, and I was like, that's cool. I don't think to do that. I think, <laughs> Oh, they probably know it's important to me. I'm not, I, won't bother them. So th- I, I know. I don't know. I really like when people like come and talk to me about the stuff that I make. So I kind of want to put that back out in the world, I guess. I don't know. Um, but yeah, yeah. that was really meaningful to me. And I don't know. It's just a trip getting to become friends with everybody and speaking with everybody at guardian con too. Like that was wild. That just sitting in a house full of people who <laughs> are super cool and you yeah, really care fun. about. And man, I, I, if you told me that I would have been doing that like earlier on in 2017 and be like, <laughs> okay, sure. But were, were you there when I did my um my magic trick with the cards? Yeah, I remember actually. Yeah, John apes is pretty good magic Apes's trick, props, right? Yeah, <laughs> my friend John was uh was really excited about that. I think he told me later on. He's like, yeah, that made me wanted to get back into like card tricks and stuff. Um, yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> well, I only know the one, so it didn't didn't have that same effect no, on me. Uh, I just scrolled back to the very beginning of our Discord PM mm-hmm. and. Uh, you know what, folks? The story checks out. Yeah. That is true. I remember it very distinctly because I was very nervous to talk to you. Yeah. I'm nervous to well, talk. We're all very intimidating I'm, people. I'm nervous to talk to anybody, you. though. So <laughs> Fallout especially. Just, He's a scary guy. You can just get on the wrong side of him and yikes. God, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it, it has been really crazy getting to know everybody and becoming friends with the whole crew because you are very good people and I really appreciate that. And I'm, I'm just, I'm so elated to be on the show. Like this is, you know, I never would have thought sort of thing (laughs) that this would have happened, I guess. But yeah. Well, it's happening. That's touching. And also uh, you had like an internet dropout and sounded like a robot. So I was trying to like emotionally connect to what you're saying, but it sounds like a Daft Punk song. So sorry if it seems you mean like you can't, being a little flip about it. You can't connect with your Daft Mine's Punk. Mine's doing that too. Damn robots. Oh, dang. Well. So Moon, the first time we actually met mm-hmm. was on a podcast. Yes. Like not the best place to be chatting and, you know, getting to know someone, but we were both on uh, the planet destiny podcast on the same time. You were our, our guest when I was a host once, but uh, um, yeah, that's all started on that site, but you kind of like you run the show over, over there now. So tell us a little bit about how, how that came to being, or, or at least uh, what, what goes on over there at the old, the old planet destiny. Yeah. The, the whole how of how that happened is a little bit convoluted, but um, <laughs> sure. the old, manager, um, brought me on, um, just as like a content creator, podcast host sort of thing. Um, Mm -hmm. after I sent him an audio reel and yeah, that lasted for, I I was just sitting at that level for about, God, I can't even remember six months maybe. Um, Mm -hmm. and then he stepped down. He got, you know, another job out in real world land and somebody <laughs> needed to take over. So I decided, hey, why not? I just had quit my job in real world land um, because I was miserable. And I thought that I was going to mostly uh, do freelance design work and art and stuff like that, um, which was OK for like a month or so. But yeah, it all just kind of fell into place. and. Now I can do this pretty much full time. It's kind of awesome. 
Um, so what I do mostly is uh, manage the team of content creators. So we have people doing production work for YouTube. So any videos that you see, um, most of them aren't made by me, but they're made by people who I kind of direct, you know. Um, and then I also manage our Twitch stream team who, you know, it's kind of all in the name. They stream on Twitch and I work with <laughs> everybody to um, come up with ideas and, you know, get host or guests on our own podcast um, and see what we can do for the streaming side of things. But yeah, I'm sort of like a glorified janitor, but that's okay with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. That is, that is a lot of internet jobs. It's a lot. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's planet destiny plays an interesting role in the destiny community. And I'm trying to think of some metaphor for it and I'm struggling because in some way or another, it feels like almost everyone in this destiny community has passed through planet destiny mm -hmm. at some point, right? Like, a lot of people, you know, we consider big names in the Destiny community have written for Planet like Destiny SNL or made of. YouTube content. Exactly. <laughs> God, if only we were that cool now. <laughs> <laughs> Folks may remember back in the day, uh, you heard a little show called Crucible Radio back on Planet yep. Destiny. It, uh, it, it, it has, uh, yeah, worn a lot of hats over the years. So I guess I'm curious if you you know, kind of zoom out a little bit and think about sort of the big picture direction for it. Um, I mean, what's, what's your goal with Planet Destiny? Why, why should people go to that site? What do they get out of it? I really want to keep it as it's been as a source of information for people, because I think that's really valuable to have. So we're <laughs> right now we're in the process of sort of streamlining our website um, and figuring out what kind of YouTube content works the best for us, um, but is also useful to people and enjoyable to, I guess, consume. Um, but at the same time, it's been kind of evolving with the people that I've brought onto the team into something that focuses more on the community, you know, and the people who really make it possible to put out content and make a living. Um, and everything else in between, it's, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot going on um, and it's kind of hard to quantify, but. Yeah, well, I, I could definitely see that because I mean, back when we were, uh, you know, coming up as a podcast, it was just like. You know, people were just like, feed me information. Mm -hmm. And it was like, there's like a hunger for it. And that obviously still exists and definitely got brought back with Forsaken and everything. But Planet Destiny was there. Like it just had all the info and that yep. was such a huge component. But like, you know, that was like the early days. Obviously there is a, com a community that exists, but it has grown into like an identifiable thing, right? The destiny community, you have yes. something specific when that comes to your, comes to mind versus like interacting with people that play other games that you like to play. So I, yeah, I, I can see how, you know, it's sort of grown with the times where it's like, that's what the destiny world is now. We're all like on this like crazy train uh, together. Use that song on your website. Um, but like, <laughs> yeah, it's gone from just like feed me data about what gun to use and now just like, like existing in the destiny world. So yeah, it's, it's changed a bit, but all, all, all in relation to how playing destiny has changed over like four years now. Mm -hmm. it's very, very interesting. Yeah, definitely. And how guardians interact with each other too, I think has mm -hmm. kind of changed um, a lot in that framework. Um, but I would really like to focus on sort of elevating people from all different aspects of the community, you know, cause we used to focus, like you said, and like I said, just so heavily on information and people who, you know, give you all the numbers and they just, that's great. And I think that's really important. Um, but I also want to focus on the artists and the musicians and people doing stuff involving lore. Cause that's all really cool too. Mm -hmm. And I think giving everything a spotlight as much as I possibly can, um, let's, you know, people have a wider array of entertainment to enjoy. So that's my goal. For sure. I think there's 
a fair amount of destiny. Like you mentioned the lore, but there's that and just all all the things that sort of come out of that where you know, you can read it in game or you know, you can go to you can go to a website and read it there. But I feel like a lot of the lore in this game doesn't really get appreciated until people in the community find ways to draw it out and to you know, depict it and to inspire content that they make or you know, make YouTube videos and sort of guide people out of it. Like if we didn't have that part of the community, a lot of kind of the, like the really cool, weird story that exists in the Destiny world would sort of get lost in the mix. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's it's cool to see that happening. Right now, I mean, what's what's going on in the Destiny world that people should check out that we might not you know have on our radar? You know, there is a lot of stuff <laughs> going on, I think, too, that I don't know about. And it's kind of difficult right now because everybody's so excited about Anthem. Like, I don't mean to date this episode <laughs> or whatever. Um, but I'm working actually right now with a content creator um, who is making a tabletop RPG uh, based around Destiny. And she's calling it Dungeons Ooh. and Destiny. Um, so I've kind of gotten her on board with planet destiny, um, to sort of advertise for her and give her that platform. Um, and we run a campaign on our Twitch channel and stuff like that, but that's really interesting yeah, to me because that, again, the most important thing, at least to me about destiny is its story and its lore and it's, I guess, aesthetic and all that stuff. Um, so it's really interesting to explore that through a different medium that this person's created. And I think more people should know about it. Um, yeah, I am also currently doing a project or I guess I'm part of a very big project, um, that Bife is working on, uh, his thorn last word video. I'm doing some voice acting work for that. And I'm very Ooh, excited for more. that to come out. Mm -hmm. Um, I got to read a grimoire card, Thorn 4, if you want to go read it, um, with a lovely gentleman named Connor Cronus, who is extremely talented. Um, actually, this morning, I got to sit in a Discord call with him, and we read our lines, and, like, I was so nervous. He has some serious chops. Like, he was <laughs> super talented, and I was, you know, I was blown away by that, but to get to work with him and also Bife, like Bife is legendary in the community, right? Um, mm -hmm. Most people really love him. So that it's just really cool getting to work with these really talented, committed, awesome people. Yeah. <laughs> I did a thing for that too, but it's not going to be as good as Moon segment. <laughs> I don't know. I, I heard your lines. They were pretty good. Okay. Oh boy. We'll <laughs> they see. They were fun. <laughs> Nah, I, I I told Bife that I was born for the role that he asked me to play. And that role <laughs> is not Dredgen Yor or anyone important. So you'll <laughs> it's uh Huey, the hot dog salesman. <laughs> it's just power. me in the back. Like, hey, I know you guys are yeah. finding your destiny, but do you want a hot dog? Just like I'm Huey. The Bones Deep is actually playing the, the guy in the tower that goes, Hey Titan. <laughs> <laughs> Listen up, good people of the city. I just say that like, like 40 five times, times in the times background. In a row. <laughs> Somebody smuggling worm spore into the city. Yeah. Just, <laughs> okay. uh, literally just placed in the background of the video, YouTube video. It'll be great. God. See, that's what I was born to do. <laughs> <laughs> you should uh, you should record some extra tower dialogue and just send it to Cosmo. Like, see what happens. Because, <laughs> you know, like. They they, they kind of need it. It's been a few years. Oh, man. Of I wish that, that were a person. thing. I got to be a member of SAG <laughs> and all that fun stuff to do. Yeah, they'll yeah. figure it out. They, there's a thing they can uh, like sort of like reverse get someone in. It's a whole whole thing. But, you know, that person's been smuggling worm spore into the city very effectively. <laughs> Where are you getting it? Nobody's been to the yeah. Dreadnought for How like two I years. Buy it? No one has stopped them <laughs> whatsoever. It's an epidemic. <laughs> Why can't I buy it? Good question. Hmm. <laughs> Did you guys know that um, anytime there's any sort of um, bird symbology in Destiny or anyone says the word bird or you ever see a bird, um, that's me. <laughs> Are you just Lewis? Like, you played the part yeah. of Lewis, oh, yeah. right? You, well, I'm, I'm Lewis, but I'm also all the other birds at the same time. What was and the, the bird, bird hive mind? Ooh. 
Mm-hmm. Awful. Yep. Why, uh, why were you <laughs> we really twitchy everywhere. early on? What happened? Yeah, why were you jiggling? Um, uh, th- that was a contract licensing dispute. <laughs> okay. um, we were sorting things out. And I said, I sent them a cease and desist and uh, they just, uh, we settled for it shaking continuously. Mm. Okay. Um, okay. We got sorted out. Everything's fine now. A lot of, lot of back end stuff in Destiny. People don't really understand what goes into this game and you know what makes it tick. But they think they do. I'm a, Remember on in D1, if you go down into the moon and you get to a location called Circle of Bones, that's me. Oh, got you. <laughs> well, the whole moon, that's, and, uh, that's all me, the bones right? Inside like, of the garden. I'm a whole yeah. freaking <laughs> destination. Yeah, it's <laughs> What's just up? me. I'm a giant and I'm holding my mouth open and the guardians are actually running around inside my mouth. It's just high. really scary imagery. Birds and all birds. You're a giant mouth. I don't like it, man. I gotta go. These names were chosen. Literally. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Notice uh, Swain doesn't show up anywhere in the destiny universe because uh, they couldn't afford him. He's yeah, too expensive. Too expensive. <laughs> too- <laughs> I keep telling you, I wasn't here last week. Those they prices. couldn't afford me to be here. Oh, I, we can't consistently pay Swain that often to be on this <laughs> show. Are you joking? I they cost gave, way too yeah. many bungee bucks. <laughs> they gave birds like three yes. Doritos and a ball of lint That's or something like that. I don't know. I, I've gotten nowhere else to be. Fair enough. Um, so there's another side of it, too, in addition to like the, the, the internet content people make, you know, sort of the digital content. There's another side of Destiny that, you know, if you don't go to Guardian Con, you know, you may not get get a chance to sort of experience it firsthand. But actually last year at Guardian Con, uh, I got to meet a friend of yours. Um, I think he's on Twitter at, uh, at Apsis Props, yeah. who I first met as a human, not in costume, <laughs> and seemed like a very pleasant, soft-spoken individual. And then I met him in full costume, and I said, oh, okay, he's from another galaxy, and he's got all the space armor. <laughs> um, and and just did, like, amazing detailed work on, uh, what is a fusion rifle? I want to say Pantere. it was a Pantere. Pantere. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah, just when, they, like, they had that whole season that was all Seahawks colors. And, um, yeah, just, just like stunning cosplay work all around and sort of that physical crafting side of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, what's, what's your sort of involvement in that side of the scene? Um, personally, I'm not like, I don't do it myself. I would love to, um, it just costs a lot of money really is my only, <laughs> my only, um, the only thing holding me back. Um, but yeah, uh, Apsis Props, that's my friend, John, and he is, an extremely talented, thoughtful individual. Um, and I was really, really excited to get to see his cosplay in person because I'd, I'd never seen it in person before, right? Like that was the first time we'd met. Um, but he is insane. Like the amount, the quantity of things that he makes just all the time. He's always doing something. He's always creating something, um, which is super cool to me. Um, he made recently a trust hand cannon. Um, he is working on, I think some other stuff from a couple different games, but yeah, no, that kid is like always going <laughs> and yeah. Like check, check out his Instagram, right? Like this, this rat King. Yeah. His, his rat King. Yeah. That was the yeah. other thing he's working on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's always trying new things. Always. He's just so into what he does. And I think there are so many people like that in the community that don't get seen as much as I think they should, which again is why putting the spotlight on them is so important to me. Um, He actually modeled for me a Gambit token. He 3D modeled it um, with the Gambit logo on one side and my logo on the other side. And I'm going to make a silicone mold of it and cast it in resin. I'm really excited about it. Cool. (laughs) But yeah, no, it's super neat. I, I really appreciate people like that because to me, that is just such a genuine expression of how much you love a piece of media, whether it's a game or a movie or whatever the hell you're cosplaying or making props from or doing fan art of or, you know, writing music about or covering songs from just it's so cool to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it makes, it makes the, this sort of shared universe a bigger place, yeah. right? Like it's not just about playing the campaign and that's the story. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a substrate that people build all types of stuff on top of. Definitely. God, this Instagram. 
Just yeah. you can right? go the Swain. You could do a uh, stop scrolling. You could do the, what Swain does and just get a Doctor Lupo tattoo. <laughs> that also works. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I just like remembering that once in a while. It's a great one. Man. All right, Moon. Uh, yes. Where do you see the next year of Destiny going? There's a lot on the horizon. But oh. we have, some of it we know about. Some of it we don't know about it. What What are you planning for over at Planet Destiny and in general? And beyond. Um, mm. That's a tough question. What I see for the actual game, I don't know. With the Activision split from Bungie, I feel like that is a huge kind of wrench in the machine, right? Like, what are they going to do now? How are they going to handle that? Is that going to change the direction of anything? Yeah. And we just don't know yet. So I'm really excited to see how things are going to evolve and sort of change without that influence. Um, As far as Planet Destiny goes, <laughs> the main thing I've been doing recently is super just unexciting. It's just trying to make things more efficient and streamline the way, you know, the cogs sort of turn. Um, you can expect to see more interviews from people, probably. Um, you can expect to see more written articles on the website. But other than that, it's just, you know, we're just keeping the ball rolling. We're just trying mm-hmm. to do the best we can. We talked a bit in the beginning a bit about how, you know, it kind of took you a while to find find your group in the mm-hmm. Destiny community where it made sense. And look, everybody knows if you're into the Crucible, you, you go hang out with those Crucible Radio guys, discord.gg slash Crucible Radio. <laughs> that's all well and good. It's, it's, it's common knowledge. Uh, if you have suggestions for how the game could be made better, you go everywhere else. <laughs> uh, but if you are interested in that other side of destiny where creative people, you know, chase down their dreams in the destiny world, uh, if that sounds appealing to, to some of our listeners, where should they go? Um, you can find us. There's a lot of different places you can find us. You can find us on Twitter, um, at destiny, destiny news.net. You can find us, um, on Twitch at planet underscore destiny. You can find, just find us on YouTube. Look up planet destiny there, uh, planet destiny.com, all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, but hopefully there's something for everyone. So, um, you can also go to our Twitter page and there we have our discord link. Um, we also have a clan for every platform. So if you want to connect with more people in the community, I would highly encourage that. We have a lot of great people um, who hang out. So definitely, if you're looking to make friends. Well, right on. What if uh, what if people want to follow you on the internet, if you want to put that out there? Oh, sure. Um, you can find me. I'm just moonvolved everywhere. Um, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, that sort of thing. Consistency. Yeah. We keep telling people. You got to have consistency. <laughs> it's, it's the brand, you know. <laughs> Got people out there with YouTube channels they made in 2011 that they were when they were in middle school, but no, none of that. <laughs> God, yeah, I, I buried those as deep as I could <laughs> for sure. You'll never find my MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for coming on, Moon. This is a nice chat, and it's always uh, it's always good for for us on this show to talk about stuff that isn't you know the what the best role on your dust rock blues is because. Like we said, we're part of the the community as well, and it's come a long way. And here we are. What is it? Year? What time? What? What? When? How long has it been? What year is it? 2019. Ugh. Oh. Oh. When did I start this game? What's happened? <laughs> time has has really uh, flown. But uh, you do a great job over there at Planet Destiny. It, it's in very good hands. Thank you. And uh, I can say that uh, very truthfully. So thank you for coming on the show and sharing a little bit. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. It it was an Thank honor. You. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, oh, go check out that uh, that that bife video. Oh yes, that's some good Thorn stuff. Last word. When's that coming out? What, do you know when he's dropping it? Because I don't. 
Uh, I don't either. I'm still in the process of okay, getting everything there. together and producing it and stuff. So <laughs> just go to bife.com. 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 <laughs> I assume. Well, you're by the same as twab.com. The bife. Yeah, we bought twab.com. So we're going to reroute that to bife.com, which will reroute to bife's YouTube channel. You can see the video there. Well, you made it to the end of the episode. Here we are, the part of the episode where birds plugs his spreadsheet. Ah, <laughs> no, you guys. Are we done? Did you guys? I'm done with that. Okay. I'm done. Uh, no, it's I'm there doing if it. You I'm want carrying it. the torch. Uh, <laughs> Swain's okay. gonna plug your birds' spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, oh man, I sure wish I knew what perks could roll on what pieces of armor so I knew what I could dismantle and what I should keep. If only there was something. Wow, Birds is more (laughs) bored with his own spreadsheet than I am bored with playing with Not Forgotten. (laughs) I've moved on to to other stuff on the computer. (laughs) Uh, In under the wire, no, it's good. It's good. Rush to counting it. Hmm. Hey, go to crucibleradio.com. Um, go to github.com and try and access the private part of my account where I'm doing interesting things with computers that I don't want to tell anyone about what? right now. What? Go ahead and check out twab.com. We just picked it up. Should lead yes. you uh, to bife.com, which will then direct you to his YouTube channel. Oh. Oh, you, you won't believe this. What? Somebody stole twab.com right out from under me. Are you serious? Yeah. How? Uniregistry Corp. Bullshit. Let's sue them. Twab.com failed to load page content. <laughs> Search ads. See, this is not what I would have done with it at all. It is a nice mountain picture. That is a nice But the rest picture. of it, it is, it's all yeah, wrong. Yeah, it's good background. It's all wrong. This is not my vision. This is not my vision. Maybe I can get a dot, dot, dot net or something. Twab.gov. Twab.net. Oh, they took that one too. Wait, the same thing? No, it's different. It's uh, together we are better. Oh, it asked me to translate to this page. Is this Turkish? This might be Turkish. Mm. Get it? Twab. Oh, they've got teach. sustainable solutions. They got those stock photos that I see on every other company website. It's yeah, a shiny building cool. with no sign on it. There's some gears turning. Oh, yes, and a rowing team. Uh, what about twab.org? I feel, I feel, uh, this is gonna, oh, twab consulting. Wait, <laughs> this one's real? Guys, it's hard to be an independent visionary entrepreneur in 2019. Yep. Especially if your ideas are just the bungee blog. <laughs> yes, but a day before, oh, right, that's right, right, what sorry, makes sorry. it special. Well, everyone. All right, well, thanks for listening to the show. Thanks for stopping <laughs> by. We'll see you next week. What's up, everyone? Bones here. Do you like podcasts? Do you like chill conversation? Well, me and my co-hosts Swain and Birds put out a bonus podcast every month on Patreon. If you want to check it out and be a part of more awesome stuff, head over to patreon.com crucibleradio and join the squad. See you there.